Is the ACR as cool as people think it is? And the short answer is absolutely not. The only reason the ACR still gets talked about, still gets bought by people my age, is because of a video game that came out over a decade ago. Any unrecognized contacts will show up as white dots. That's right, Modern Warfare 2. Which is pretty cool if you think about it, because a video game literally <laughs> kept a gun alive within the gun industry. So it's pretty cool to note that arts and entertainment, whether it is video games, movies, you know, whatever it happens to be, drives sales and drives innovation sometimes in the firearms industry. Uh, it also keeps products alive, like this one right here. Now, why did the ACR die? Well, there's a lot of reasons behind that. You can research it, you can look into that. We're not gonna get into it. Uh, but the skinny is, uh, from my experience with the ACR, uh, I would never pick this gun over the other guns that we have. We've got 416s, MCXs, SCARs, all sorts of custom DI, ARs, LMTs. I just got a Knight's rifle. I I'll choose any of those guns over this sucker. I've had this sucker blow up twice on me. And I haven't even shot this since we got it back. It just got zeroed, so I saw it being shot. It seemed to function. I just fired one round and got a hit on steel. So I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty confident that this will work this time, maybe. Uh, but the other cool thing about this gun, and we're gonna be running some experiments, is we have a select fire ACR, as the title uh, indicates. So we're gonna be doing some drills with this in auto, both suppressed and unsuppressed. So let's go over the build real quick, because there's, there's one key difference to this gun that may have contributed to some of the issues we had early on. This is a chopped 13.7 gun. It was originally chopped by uh, Parker Mountain. Uh, he had to work on it twice, and it has since been worked on by Templar Precision. Um, so it is a little bit shorter than the stock you know, ACR configuration. Uh, I'm gonna be playing with it in the unsuppressed and suppressed settings, so, you know, when I add the mini Surefire Suppressor and not. Uh, standard polymer handguard. I have another handguard, but honestly, the, the lockup on it's horrible and the tolerancing is trash. Uh, so standard polymer it is. Uh, the super wobbly ACR stock, in fact, the entire gun, I don't know if you could see, all three of these parts are wobbling all over the place. The tolerances are horrible, which, hey, maybe it means this will work better in colder weather. Like another video that just came out. Maybe. Uh, but in, normally I don't like guns this wobbly, like they're, they feel like they're just going to fall apart. Uh, they do have an ambi uh, bolt release, uh, bolt lock down here. In my opinion, it's not quite as intuitive as a bad lever. I prefer a bad lever. Uh, this has a Geisley trigger in it, I think. No, it doesn't. I originally had the Geisley, but since this is the select fire lower, uh, it does not have the Geisley trigger. And uh, so yeah, so we're going to shoot it in standard T-Rex Arms fashion. We're gonna start with the basics, just some ready ups, working the safety, which is, uh, to be honest, it's kind of crappy. Uh, safety and do semi. We're not gonna get into auto quite yet. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna see what happens. All right, so we're good to go on that. Getting on the gun nice and fast, working the safety. Although it is super spongy, well not spongy, it just, it, it slips. I was catching the the safety kind of halfway, plus it's cold, I'm wearing gloves, but um, it's just, it's not a real defined click into position, which is normally what I like with the safety. So all A zones in a 141, so my split times uh, with this stock full auto trigger, a 19, a 18, a 17, a 19, not too bad. It's got some nice uh, rate of fire right there. So I fired uh, five rounds, perfect. Uh, stock was not fully in my shoulder, I also have a pack on. So these were the five that I had uh, with my semi-auto burst, so good marksmanship. Uh, and the auto burst is kind of up here. So the first three, and then it starts to slide off to the right, path of least resistance, all that good stuff. Um, but as you can see, not too bad. Uh, the time for that is, it's not gonna be accurate in recording. Um, it looks like it's a 131, so very similar. And these split times in auto, it's also not going to be accurate in recording, but they're probably like 0.06 or something like that. So that's fun. But let's do a little more auto, because I shoot semi-auto guns all the time, and I'm curious what I can get away with. 
uh, with some auto action. So both targets on the sides, we're gonna do, do uh, two bursts, around four rounds on each and kind of see what happens. Very slow, getting uh, from safe into auto. It's just slow, doing that with any gun, really. We got triple A zone here, not bad, not bad on auto, controlling that recoil. And then on this guy, not great. Not aiming for the head, but that's where the recoil's going. Uh, so we've got two Charlies and uh, an Alpha. Not, not, not horrible, but not great. Oh, it's cold out. All right, so I had a little more bolts than I thought. I thought it was gonna be like a five reload five or something, but it was more like seven. So on this same target, we had three alphas already. So the first burst, not the best recoil management, not the best stock placement either. That slid over. On my second burst though, the, the EOTech just sat there. And that is something that I've noticed running auto because I shoot, I don't shoot auto a lot because it's overrated, but the, the auto I have shot, having a reticle with a little bit more bloom, like an EOTech with the 65 MOA outer ring helps. I mean, it's, it's easier to see in the window as it's dancing up and down or off to the right than a single dot optic. Uh, so when I have run auto, like on the saw, on the MCX, which is super fast, uh, or the 416, which is even worse, uh, the EOTech has helped a lot at keeping the rounds not, it's not marksmanship, but keeping them a little more center than the single dot that disappears immediately. So another benefit to the EOTech, if you are running auto, it's pretty cool. Not great. That's pretty great. Yeah, we're not gonna talk about this one. So that's at 10 yards, mag dumping one full magazine with a partial for the reload. We've got everything in the Alpha Charlie, is at 10 yards. But yeah, full auto is not super accurate. That's a fact. So both side targets on the move on semi-auto. I had one right here, called it as I was walking. So we got Delta Charlie 2 Alpha, that was the far target. Autoed on him. So I see one in the black here. Everything else is good based on our last drill. And then this guy, semi-auto, two Deltas, three Alphas. Not horrible. All right, so that's running auto at 50 yards. Not recommended. So we've got two alphas, a Charlie, a couple up there. We got, okay, a little better. Sure enough, you know it's going up. This is what we got, four hits, so we're missing one. And this is the prone, which in the prone, on a normal day, not with four inches of snow, you can control some recoil in the prone. But uh, I wasn't as close to the deck as I could be. And uh, I have a decent group. The others are gone though. So uh, in video games, when you're absolutely lasering people on auto, not very realistic. So to get a little more range out of this gun, all I did is slap this EOTech G33 on here. 
Now, with the conditions that we have right now, and how much glass and snow and ice and stuff is accumulating on the EOTech to begin with, we are now stacking one, two, three, four panes of glass that can receive snow and ice and water. And when you're looking through all four, the image down there, it's not the cleanest. It's not great. The ACOG is gonna be a lot better. Uh, but what we have is a couple steel targets, uh, one here at about 200, we have uh, about a 300, and then we have a big one at 350. We're gonna take some shots on all of them, see if the ACR can play. We're running 55 grain Winchester ball, so nothing super accurized or fancy. This is our training ammo that we run all the time. So we're just gonna send a couple on each. I will call hit in case you guys uh, can't hear, although uh, due to the microphones and stuff. So 200 meters. Three hits. Moving on to the 300. Another hit. Okay, hit. Hit. So that's three hits. A couple misses in between. Every time I'm calling hit, my sight picture jumps. <laughs> 350. That might have been a hit. That's a hit. That's a hit. So, it can be done. That's pretty rad. But what happens, because this is with no conditions at all, although I'm not, you know, I'm not on a bench, I'm not bipodded and bagged and all that good stuff, but what happens when we mix close range on auto with some movement and then we get to the long range? Let's see what that looks like. So this is the first target that I engaged and uh, on auto, not bad. Just some ice, so we're good to go. We're looking for shots of the Alpha Charlie. On auto, going this fast, I'm not trying to bullseye it. No, I shot a bunch of extra rounds on this guy. They missed. So that's fun, we got one here. And then we had some that went high. Not great, a little bit further, but then the long range was good to go. So the ACR has been running not too bad today. We've shot it out to 350 meters, done a bunch of stuff up close and run quite a bit of auto. But the real question now is, how's running one of these bad boys? So I have a Surefire three prong on here. This is the RC2 Mini, uh, which is a favorite of mine on particularly longer barrels, such as 14.5, 16 inch guns, or even something like this, a 13.7. Uh, if I'm running a shorter gun, like a 10 and a half, 11 and a half, I, I, get, the, I get the bigger can, the standard size. So all we're gonna do, I slapped this puppy on there. Oh geez, it wasn't even open. I'm a noob. Ratchet it on. All right, so we're good to go. And then right now we're in the unsuppressed setting. So normally you would rotate the whole thing to put it in the suppressed setting to change the gas to handle uh, what's gonna happen with the suppressor. But because this is a chopped barrel, I'm not sure exactly what's gonna happen. We're gonna run it on uh, the unsuppressed setting. Suppressor is on. So the casings are ejecting all the way forward. I'm gonna rotate this into the suppressed setting now. 180 degrees, S facing up. Make sure that's good to go. Ooh, that feels good. It's a little slow, it's a little slow. 
Not bad. Now for the auto. Let's see what auto does. Now that's kind of that's kind of sick. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Okay. 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 That's uh. It's uh, that's pretty rad. Not gonna lie. That's pretty cool. That's not. So that's a few bursts into the head, just to see what's going on. But as you can see, in the suppressed setting, I also put a grip on here so I can pull the gun a little tighter into my body, giving me that right angle. Uh, it's a little easier to keep the gun on target. On the suppressed setting with this Surefire Mini, this thing's kind of hot. <laughs> Not gonna lie, it's kind of cool. Double head shots are good to go. Nice. The five's not great. Two Charlies, three Alphas. Yeah, I mean, it's right here. Back there. Didn't take my time enough. The auto's great though. I need to take my time more on this one. Yep. Three off with two Charlies. Three of five were good. Those footsteps. So the ACR has been working out for us today. That's pretty cool. And we have a professional who specialized in the ACR work on the gun. He got it to work, even with as strange as it is being a chopped down barrel and not like a standard 14.5 or 16 inch gun. But is the ACR still a gun that we're gonna go buy more of to field in our armory and come out and shoot tens of thousands of rounds with? Probably not. I know they're trying to bring it back and hey, kudos to them for trying to bring it back. If they can improve on the design, uh, but the issue is going to be combating, you know, how people already see the ACR and trying to change people's minds. Because for years, people have known that, you know, this gun wasn't as cool as they said it was going to be. And uh, not as reliable as they said it was going to be. And so that's a lot of stigma and that's a lot of re-education that's going to have to happen for this gun to be able to launch again with some success or at least some trust uh, from people. Uh, as far as this being a, a cool gun in auto, Kind of, sort of. Now should this rifle be available in select fire with automatic fire capability right out of the box available to all of us? Absolutely. The fact that I can own this because I have paid some special money to the government to make it legal to own is utterly preposterous. Uh, it's, it's, it's insanely stupid. Um, every rifle should be able to be full auto with just the press of a button if you want it, but in most cases, you're not gonna want that. You're gonna want semi-auto. I was throwing all kinds of shots over here. Inaccuracy, not effective fire on semi-auto. It's a big difference. 
So as far as this being a cool automatic rifle, sure, kind of, sorta, yeah, I guess. Uh, but the reality is all carbines should have that capability if the user wants it. So who knows, maybe we'll see some change in that in the next 10 years or so, but you also won't find very many YouTubers saying that it should change. So hope that was enjoyable guys. Maybe this gun will appear in other videos of ours potentially. And uh, we've got some other fun guns that we wanna do videos on this year. So if you're interested in seeing that, you should definitely subscribe. Oh man, I hate, I hate doing normal YouTube closers because we're not a normal YouTube channel. But I hope that was enjoyable. But again, really doesn't matter what kind of gun you've got. If you suck, you suck. I'll see y'all next time.